Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, artistic director and founder of Vocal Essence and organist choir master at Plymouth Congregational Church. So we are now approaching 250 composers that have been part of this series, and there are more to go. But the fun thing has been that each of these composers has had a role to play with Vocal Essence and with Plymouth Church, both of them or one of them. And today we're going way back in time, back to the Renaissance for the music of Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina, born in 1525, died in 1594. So, when I've chosen some of the older composers to perform, they have been composers that have been unique or very important in the world of choral music. Certainly, Palestrina was that because he was really at the culmination of Renaissance polyphony. Uh, you know, at that time, the Pope and the Cardinals were trying to say, uh, music needed to be in this style. And they wanted music not to have too much flowing where one voice came in and then, you know, another one so that you'd hear. But they were each saying the words at a slightly different time. So the Pope said it needs to be more regulated that they would each come in. And people like Palestrina said, well, it's also important that there's a feeling about the music, that it expresses an emotion for what the text is trying to say. And uh, because of his greatness at writing beautiful choral music, uh, he was able to convince them that this kind of Renaissance music was important for the church. He composed more than 105 masses, 68 offertories, 140 madrigals, 300 motets, and he was willing to make it what we would call pure polyphony. In other words, it was dynamic. Uh, there were some leaps in the music, but not big leaps, because that's what the cardinals didn't want. They didn't want you to sing and then you know, no, you might go something like that. He also was careful about dissonance because dissonance, which is important because it expresses an emotion when you go and resolve it, ah. But it was important that you did it on certain beats of music where it wouldn't sound too, um, too difficult for the listener to hear. One of the pieces that is a classic with Palestrina is his motet Sicut Cervus, uh, the words from Psalm 42, as the deer longs for running water, so my soul longs for you, O God. And so what you hear here is the little simple motif, just this. and then in comes, and then comes, and it moves like flowing water, very simply, very beautifully. The tenors begin, the altos, the sopranos, and finally the bass. So you can hear this feeling of flowing streams.
among the many masses that he wrote was his mass that he wrote for Pope Marcellus, which is one of the famous ones called the Missa Pape Marcelli. And here is the beginning of that, which begins with just the upper voices coming in on the text, of course, of Kyrie Eleison. when you're listening to that, there's not a lot of chord changes. And if you think about it, those cathedrals in Italy, where Palestrina was living and writing, had amazing reverberation. So if the chord changed too often, it just sounded like chaos to them. That's sort of what you would end up hearing but keeping the chords clean made it possible that you could have various voices come in. Motets of Palestrina that is especially wonderful and beloved is the one that is on the text from the Psalms, Super Flumina Babylonis. By the waters of Babylon, I sat down, we sat down, and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. And here, again, everything moves very stepwise. <laughs> one voice after another, very plaintively coming in just and saying in those places by the waters of Babylon. The basses start us. And the altos. And the sopranos. and the tenor. Then after each one has come in like that, they sing together. a divine, wonderful piece, and a great delight to sing. Music of Palestrina. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>